Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about Journey to the Radiant Citadels. And I'm going to give you a reason to buy Journey to the Radiant Citadels, even if you intend not to. All right. So first of all, um, there's two ways to handle the Journey to the Radiant Citadels book that's coming out. Okay, and that and two ways to handle it if you buy it. Okay. Now, first of all. Uh, if you have any plans not to buy Journey to the Radiant Citadel, I really want to talk to you, right? Please don't be that don't be that guy. Come on, man. Like, this is the first time in history Dungeons & Dragons has brought people of color, black and brown people, and the only writers in the book, right, that have core content in the book are black or brown. This is a minority product. This is a first in Dungeons & Dragons history. And frankly, I don't think a single D&D player or a single D&D &D dungeon master can skip this. And the reason why is this is how we change the world. This is how we make the world better. Like, basically, I, will, I voted for Obama twice, okay? And the reason I did it was I live next to a blighted city, right? And there are a lot of minority children there, right? And when their moms, uh, people of color, uh, you know, told their kids, you, you know, when a... When a mother or a father in that city told their per, you know, their person of color child, uh, you could be president one day, that was a wish and a prayer, like because it never happened in 230 years of American presidents, right? But the reality is, Obama changed all of that, and we actually, and it is. If you tell a minority child today that they could be president, there, that's more than you know, unicorn kisses. Like that's real, right? Because it's already happened, right? The Democrats delivered it, and I delivered it. I voted for it twice because there was no way on earth I was going to see the possibility of the first minority president just slipping through the ether, right? And the reality is, if we want a future where Dungeons and Dragons is truly for everyone, that means everybody's got to get on board and do the right thing and support this book, right? So if you have any plans of not buying Journey of Citadel of the Radiant Journey through the Radiant Citadel. You need to look into your heart and really see what is driving that decision, right? Because now, if if you're you know if you're poor and you can't afford it, I understand your release. Don't worry about it, right? But if you got if you got the kind of check, if you're buying a single book this year, right? Radiant uh, Journey through the Radiant Citadel should be it, because this book does more than just put a good adventure on the ground for dungeon masters and for players. It changes society, right? And this is America, and th in this land. Everybody's equal. We have true liberty, true freedom, true truth, right? Like, this ain't no Putin realm, right? Like, we live for freedom and liberty here, right? This is real, right? And if we're going to make it real, it can't just be a bunch of speeches and nonsense. It's got to be boots on the ground help, right? And boots on the ground help for justice, for emancipation, for liberty, for, you know, justice for people of color. You, if you're a D&D DM or a D&D player, you had better buy Journey through the Radiant Citadel, all right? Now, all right, let me let me deal with, let's say you don't want to, right? I'm going to give you a reason today why you can get it and it can be good for you, okay? Because I, I know I know for a fact there's some people, you know, in, in, in this subset watching me who plan to not buy this book. So I'm going to try to give you a good reason to buy it, right? Because this is, is really important. It's time for us to show up and show out, right? Like, it's important, all right? Okay, there's two... Okay, if you buy this book, there's two ways to deal with it, okay? First of all, you can deal with it face value, okay? Now, we play a fantasy game, right? And one of the fantasies that's being presented in this game is worth exploring, right? Now, I know what I'm about to say is going to be repugnant to a lot of you, right? And even I have some reservations on some of this, okay? So first of all, the fact that it's written by uh, by POCs, great. I'm, I'm here for it, right? 100% uh, support, right? But one thing that I share the same concern you do is this is a non, this is the expansion of non-violent combat, uh, like non, non-combat content, non-violent combat content in D&D, an expansion of interaction an expansion of interaction. I don't really... Oh, and actually, you know what? This book really might be exploring... Uh, might be an expansion of exploration, right? Now, I get it. That's frightening to people. It's very frightening, right? We're so used to having, you know, 80, 90% of every book being devoted to combat, right? Whether it's through magical means or non-magical means or, or you know, um, whether it's through weapons, magic, or 
literally with our, you know, with the body of our player characters, right? It's all, com it's almost always combat, you know, it's 10, and you're lucky to see 10, 20%. Now this book, the, the Radiant Citadel is told to us already to be a, a like a Finland, right? A, a, neut a neutral territory, okay? Uh, that does not have any significant military, um, that doesn't really have a significant military. They have some shield bearers, but they're trained specifically not to fight as often as possible and only to help. And so even though, you know, even the thing that barely looks like a mil like a military unit on Radiant Citadel is weak because they don't really do much, right? Like, you know, come on, these shield bearers, like, yeah, they're going to get wrecked, right? So here's the thing, okay? So you can, so one, you could just engage in the fantasy, right? Now, we we know for a fact that uh, that neutral countries are incredibly weak, and even they know they're weak. You know how we know this, right? Uh, because Finland right now is moving toward uh, is moving toward um, entering uh, NATO. They're taking actions right now. They're like, oh yeah, that that neutral stuff. That was a bad idea. We'd better arm up, weapon up, and join the real world, right? And so the idea of any nation having any real power and having any significance without a military, uh, without a powerful military force in it is ludicrous, right? But we can absolutely explore that in a D&D game. So you can, you can engage with the Radiant Citadel and pretend that a neutral source wouldn't get taken over tomorrow by an evil, by an evil overlord, right? Like, so that's one way you can play Journey of the uh, Radiant Citadel. Well, now I know a lot of you have zero interest in playing that way. I get it. I get it. I really do get it, right? I think, I, I think I'm going to meet the book at face value and try to, like, just interact with it the way it's designed, right? But there's a very nice, very exciting, very cool way you can use Journey of the Radiant Citadel, even if you hate the premise, right? Here we go. All right. So, basically, um, any character, fourth level or higher, you can use this with, Right? So one of the coolest things in uh, in Dungeons and Dragons is when the characters get to a point where they're not just putting money on their body, right? They they already have their magic weapons, they they have lots of gold, they got a couple jewels, right? And you can get there even by fourth of the, by you know with since the tomb it's only three slots, you can get there by fourth level, right? You can have three magic items at fourth level, right? But then the game has this second stage, right? And this is most beautifully shown in Waterdeep Dragon Heist, where Waterdeep Dragon Heist gives the players in like chapter two their own inn. They're like, you own an inn now, right? It's yours, right? Like you walk in, uh, you choose what meat is served, you kick out anybody you want to kick out, you own the building, you get gold back for renting out rooms, you get gold back every time you sell, uh, you know, some mutton, every time you sell some meat. It's big, right? So non-body money, right? Like, you know, stuff like real planning, right? So basically like real property, property. They own, the player characters own property. And that's what you can, that's, what, if you hate the idea of Radiant Citadel, what you can do is just accept the reality of Radiant Citadel and realize, okay, since there's no strong militant force in, Ra in the Radiant Citadel, that means this thing is really a bauble that can be taken over by any strong, by any, literally any strong-willed character, player character, any strong-willed ca player character. And so you can just position it to make the Radiant Citadel a bauble that you hand to one of your players, right? They arrive at the Radiant Citadel, right? They meet a tiefling in the inn and he goes, and he's like, I'm really concerned about the safety of this place. I think it's going to get taken over. Uh, I know that there's this demon lord out on this one realm, and they're going to roll in with about a thousand troops in a month, right? And the player character and the player character is like, "Whoa, wow, that's terrible! Uh, you know, really, really terrible." Um, so what's what's Radiant Citadel doing? They're not doing anything, right? They're non-militant. They're neutral, so they're just going to get swept. It's kind of sad. And what you should do is maybe like be here, and then you could pick up some cool items out of the shops that are burned to the ground when the thousand demons get here, right? I wish there was somebody else who could, you know, put some real guidance and direction on this place, right? And so if you got a grindy, like, real aggressive, non play you got a real grindy, aggressive player character, right? And they could be any alignment, right? Like, lawful good, neutral good, 
you already told them, hey, this place is because, of course, because it's got no real military, right? This whole place is going to get taken over in a month. But if you take it over, then there's going to be justice. There's going to be freedom. There's going to be tolerance. Far more than if a demon overlord comes in, right? So all you got to do is just begin gathering, you know, begin gra- gathering strong elements within the city and say, this city is mine and fight a few people for it. Yep, done, right? Oh, and you're worried about the few people you're going to fight? Well, it's not really a problem. Maybe a hundred people will die, right? But if the demon overlord gets over here, this place, half the buildings will burn to the ground and half the people here will die, right? All in all, you are doing a good, you are doing a good service. Even a lawful good character would understand that that, you know, that serves the people there, right? So that's the way to use journey, uh, journey through the Radiant Citadel if you are, if you think that the overall structure of Radiant Citadel is sus, which I do. Um, but I'm going to, but it's a fantasy game, right? So we can absolutely meet them at, you know, halfway and pretend that a, that a non-militant uh, source wouldn't get taken over in a day, right? Like, you know, it's ridiculous. It's just... You know, and by the way, was, what about Finland? They didn't get taken over. That's because they're protected by the the EU, right? They la- they laze about and don't do don't build a real military, and then you know make sure and understanding that Germany's going to roll in if anything happens, right? And probably the U.S. too, because they're you know like because they're not going to allow. Uh, well, until twenty twenty until February twenty twenty two, nobody thought a war in Europe would be allowed, right? Guess we were all wrong. <laughs> So, wow. All right. So, yeah. Uh, so, basically, that's the right way. So, that's two solid ways to interact with Journey Through the Radiant Citadel. And I think those are both good ways to interact with it. And I'm excited for this book. And I think you could be excited for this book, even if you think the main concept is sus. Right? That's a great way to do it. And one of your non player characters gets the best fortress ever. Right? Like, it's literally an entire, like, Citadel, a radiant citadel that's just like their new inn, right? And they and one of your player characters can just own the whole thing, and it's built into the story on why they should, right? Because the reality is, any kind of any country that doesn't have a real military is like you know it's kind of a lemonade stand. It's it exists at the pleasure of other nations, right? And that's what the radiant citadel is going to be. It's going to exist. The reality is, the moment your player characters get there, that place exists at their at their pleasure, right? Because they could take it over in a weekend, right? Because it doesn't really have any real fighters, right? Shield bears, please. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.